Um, I would like to call this meeting to order. Moment of silence, please. And the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, to and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice for all. Amen. Roll call, please. Mr. Caliguire. I can see you. <laughs> Did he answer? Yes, I'm here. You hear me? Okay, sorry. Ms. Darmo. Ms. Darmo, are you there? Yeah. Mr. Dovey? Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Here. Mrs. Cameron Ugian? Here. Mr. Litwack? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. And Ms. Tersich Keeley? Here. Okay, thank you. Um, may we please have the reading of statement of adequate notice? Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on May 12, 2021. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on May 12, 2021. Filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on May 12, 2021. Posting the notice electronically on the district website www.delanco.com on May 12, 2021. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. I appreciate you coming to this special meeting this evening. I would like to open the meeting up for public comment on, an, on agenda items only. Okay, I do not see anybody with their hand up. I will close that. I will move forward. And I've already spoken to Harry, even though he's the committee chair for finance, I told him I would read it for him. Um, finance committee report. Where Marissa? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have an online comment for agenda item? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I did. That's my so, fault. Sorry about that. I should screen. have reminded you. That's okay. That's, so I'll just open that back up for public comment on agenda items. And it was Mr. Bartlett. And he said, I am concerned about applying for the grant with DCA. DCA. Is there any fees or consultants that the BOE needs to pay for this or any engineering the BOE would need to pay for if the grant was issued. Usually DCA requires matching funds for grants. And this grant round says preference is given to those local units that will give matching funds. If we have to pay any funds in order to apply, I feel it's throwing good money after bad. And the probability that DCA will grant Delanco without matching funds is slim. And obviously we don't have matching funds because if we did, we would be using it for staffing programs. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. Okay, I will now close the public comment for agenda items and I will now read the finance committee report. Whereas the Delanco Township Board of Education desires to apply for and obtain a grant from the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for approximately 445,500 to carry out a project to reconstruct the existing running track and events area and install accessible routes from the existing right of way sidewalks plus or benches throughout the area. Be it therefore resolved, one, that the Delanco Township Board of Education does hereby authorize the application for such grant and two, recognizes and accepts that the department may offer a lesser or greater amount and therefore upon receipt of the grant agreement, from the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs does further authorize the execution of any such grant agreement and also upon receipt of the fully executed executed agreement from the department does further authorize the expenditure of funds pursuant to the terms of the agreement be between the Delanco Township Board of Education and the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs be it further resolved that the persons whose names titles and signatures appear below are authorized to sign the application and that they are, excuse me, and that they or their successors in said titles are authorized to sign the agreement and any other documents necessary in connection there with. Joseph Mersinger, Superintendent. 
Victoria LaSalle, Business Administrator slash Board Secretary. I ask for a motion, please. So moved. Thank you. Cameron, were you the second? Yes. Marissa, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Yep, you got this. Uh, questions or comments? Uh, comment. Oh, wait, Vince had his hand up. I'm sorry. We'll come right to you, Stephen, as soon as he's done. Vince? Thank you, Marissa. Um, my, my question's on this, with, with this grant in particular. I, I you know, I was on the track today. I don't see a real need for the track to be redone. I think it, you know, this idea lacks imagination, like a lot of things that we do. Um, I just, I, I want to know with some background on why that particular project was chosen. And um, if it's necessary, uh, explain it to me how, please. That's, that's my question. Thank you. Or maybe for Joe, I'm, I'm just to elaborate on some of the things that, uh, that would go with that, please. Thank you. Uh, Vince. So I would say that Vicki has provided really ample information about this project to the board over the past few days via email. Uh, she received numerous questions about it. Uh, she shared a lot of details about the process and, and things like, like that. Why do we pick the track though, of all things? Again, I'm going to buy the track. As opposed to something academic. Just yeah, or something like the playground there or many other things. I, I, I'm just, again, going to defer to what Vicki has already shared with the board. That, that's all I'll say. Um, I have a comment. Mm -hmm. Stephen? Um, well, first of all, I'm, I mean, I'm going to vote no on this because it's, putting the grant aside, I don't like the idea for this project. Um, I think it's wasteful. I, we have a track that's in good condition. The surface is flat. You know, you can ride, skate, run on it. There's no tripping hazard. We could maintain it for another five, 10 years with you know minimal intervention. And for me, I mean, even just environmental in environmental terms, the idea of ripping up all that asphalt, putting in brand new asphalt and then pouring new concrete is kind of offensive. I mean, it's just not what I want to see in that space, personally. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that really, I think annoys me about the way that all this went down, uh, and this has been a quick process. I, I believe that uh, the business administrator heard about this grant in April, um, and we were just informed about it um, uh, what, about a week ago, or so, but after, it was after the, the last uh, uh, General Board of Education meeting. Um, but to me, the, the thing that annoys me is that the school district, basically the business administrator has already spent money on this, you know, I, I'm not, you know, a few thousand dollars on this without approval from the full board. Um, the board president and vice president were informed, the superintendent was on board. But to me, this is like, I don't see why we're putting this much money into um, something that's speculative. It's, to me, it's a grant that we don't deserve. You know, this is not, this wouldn't be money well spent in Delanco because our track is already in good shape. So, so yeah, I'm gonna vote no and I'm disappointed that we've already sunk money into this. I also have a um, comment and a question. I live at 605 Hickory Street, right across from the track. I've lived here since 2000. I was here before the track was here. I, I walk around the track on the sidewalk every morning, every night. There are some cracks in it. Um, there have been, I mean, I watch people on the track all the time. There have been no complaints. And those, those uh, few cracks are not new. If this was a pressing issue, I would have thought that the school would have already done some patch up work, just like I have to do for my sidewalk. I have to patch up my sidewalk when I see any cracks or anything that I think might be dangerous. I agree with Steve McLaughlin. I don't want to see that whole area ripped up for 60 days for something we don't really need. I don't think you can just say, oh, this is free money. Let's take it. That's, I don't think that's a prudent course. Plus anyone who's been to the gas station or to the store knows that inflation is rampant right now. And I'm somewhat concerned, I'm a fiscally conservative person, but I'm a little bit concerned that there could be cost overruns that go above the estimate because inflation is, is so bad right now, the cost of building materials, everything. So um, that's my comment. My question is, we've been, I've been hearing a lot about the full board having to be involved. Uh, board members cannot act unilaterally and 
I'm, I'm on board with that full board. So I want to know why wasn't the full board consulted before district money was spent on a grant application? I did ask that in an email and I did not get a direct answer to that. Thank you. Is that accurate that you didn't get a direct answer? Correct. Um, I can reference the email if anyone would like. Maybe Vicky, rather than that, why don't we have Vicki explain? And this is, you know, um, some of the newer board members seem to have a problem with, uh, because the third year is when you get trained in finance and there are rules once again that apply. And there's parameters of what board secretaries, board administrators, and, you know, can spend. That's why they're in the position and to- I see that she them. might have a legal right to do that, but I don't think it's prudent for this kind of grant application to not just discuss this. I haven't seen any this plans. I, echo, I have echo. seen no plans for this. I have, this let me just finish, please now. let this me finish my orderly, thought. I haven't, please let me finish my thought. How Are we gonna rule, talk over yeah, well, this? Wait, this is what I have. Is, Harry, here is talking. Is, May I please, for? I just wanna say two things. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute myself, okay? I have seen no plans. I don't know how much is, going to be torn out. I haven't seen any plans. And I have not, we are not going to be looking at the agreement <clears throat> with the Department of Community Affairs. We don't see the agreement in front of us. There's no guarantee that we won't be on the hook for everybody any cost everybody overruns. Here. And that is my comment. I will be voting no. Thank Your you. Lack of Thank you. Oh, and one, one more quick tag there. Uh, just echoing Vera, I think Vera raised some great points. And to me, the, the, the fact that the business administrator is able to, you know, spend money, have some discretion, um, and spend money you know, when, for things that, when things fall under the uh, bid threshold, um, basically, that we're trusting that the board administrator, that the business administrator, will make good decisions, and that comes with responsibility. So I think that this is just an example of uh, mismanagement. Uh, personally, well, why is it mismanagement? Okay. Thank you. So okay, so I feel confident that we can probably take this to a vote and we'll see where we end up. Yeah, and we, it's, they didn't, it, Vicki didn't act alone. She, you know, consulted with Joe and she brought it to the president and the vice president of the board. And because of the time constraints that this is the normal flow of how but you, you know, no, about that's not how it works. Okay, and so we're going to vote on this now. Marissa, Marissa, before we vote, could yes. I ask a few words? If I may finish. Sorry. If I may finish. And it's, this is just the orderly fashion. What you're asking for is what's going on now. The whole board is so considering. The money has been spent. For you're the never going to have, if I may the finish, excuse me. You're never going to have nine people have all their questions answered. At some point, you vote. It's a voting democracy, and there's majority and minority, and you live with it. I mean, I don't know how else to explain possibly, it. Possibly, as elected officials, this is, you know, one way or another, people work together. I'm sure that you've got crossed your T's and dotted your I's, but to me, this is an abuse of the system. And we're not going to see that money again. And I'm, you know, so I'm voting no. Okay, well, we're going to vote right now. And once uh, Joe says um, something. Thank you, Marissa. I just want to say something that the board is fully aware and the public is aware from last meeting that Vicki is resigning from her position and Moorestown is not continuing the contract with us. Uh, so what I'd like to say is Vicki gains nothing by doing the extra work and spending the extra time to do this grant. She gains nothing. She won't be in Delanco. She did it because she felt that it would be beneficial for the district. And in fact, I could have very well said to her, Vicki, I know that this is something that could benefit us, but no, don't focus on this. She brought it to me. I saw the broadcast as well. We discussed it. I, I, I felt like it was a worthwhile venture because when, when, you, when you do something like this to go for these grants, there is something called an opportunity cost sometimes. And the opportunity cost is always time. That, that's bottom line already. But sometimes the opportunity cost is money. And in this case, we did discuss that and we debated and said, well, you know, is, is it worth it? And when we looked at the possibility of having hundreds of thousands of dollars of renovations of our property that's utilized by the district and the community, we said, well, 
we have to look at that and say that that that's that's a huge huge benefit to us and it's not just a lottery ticket it's let's make the effort and see what we can do now like i said vicky could have said a few weeks ago forget it we're not doing it we're not doing a special meeting she took it on herself as a special project to help the district so i i have to admit, she voted before the money went to the engineering firm i i'm a bit surprised that we have board members that are vehemently opposing this and calling it abuse and mismanagement when I, I think that's a just a mischaracterization. Thank well, you. Let's put okay. the, the cart before the horse. That's what you, you're trying to do. You know, you're trying to put the cart before the horse. Okay, so we're gonna put this out to a vote. Room? We're gonna put this out to a vote. So all in favor, aye. Uh, so I see. Aye. Harry. Aye. Okay. Cameron. We're not, we're not doing a roll call. Wow. No, I, I'm counting because some people had their hands up. So I was counting who had their hands up because we all said I at the same time. All right. So I see one, two, three. Okay. Opposed. Arma is opposed. Mm -hmm. and Steve McLaughlin opposed. And Steve and Catherine. Thank you. And Vince. By four. It's just like everybody. Uh, so, motion carries on a five to four vote. Disappointed. Okay. It, so it, it is um, the next portion of our the next portion of our meeting is the board training on committee of the whole with Jesse Adams, the NJ SBA representative. Um, so we're going to do that, and then we'll continue on with the remaining part of our agenda. Hey, Marissa, can I ask a question on this? Why it's a special okay. meeting? Why are we doing training with the public still on session? Because you're allowed to have training during with the public for um, that's part of it. You can have training during an open session, just like we've had it done previously. This the public was invited to on a come special in. meeting on any meet on any type of training. Yes, yeah. I have a quick question as well. When would I when procedurally would I call for an executive session at the end? So when we you know see um, X I where it says executive session if necessary when I'll ask if there's a need to go into executive session. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, Jesse, so sorry. No problem. Mm -hmm. Let the board take care of the business. Um, uh, and just just a, a, a comment that training, just, to, just an FYI for board members, training is not, is never an executive session activity. Any training that's done by any board in the state of New Jersey has to, it has to be done in public. It doesn't meet any of your um, exceptions that take you into executive session. And 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 training can be done at any public session. Yeah, special meetings are public sessions. So that's just an FYI in case there was some confusion on on the limitations of when training could be done. It can be done basically at any. It must be done in public and it can be done based on the board's desire on putting it on any agenda, regardless of the special or regular meeting nature of the, uh, of the, of the event. So Thank that's you. just, uh, uh, the tonight, uh, I was asked to, to come in and talk to the board about committees. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to have a conversation tonight on committees. Uh, let me give you a perspective. Um, over the last four years, there has been an increase in boards requesting a, a work session on committees and committee effectiveness. Uh, and that increase, um, what we attribute that increase to is um, you've, we've gotten a, starting to get a lot of changeover in board members. And what I mean by that, long-term board members are retiring or moving on and newer members come on board. And there's, and typically what we hear from some of the newer members is that they're concerned that they're not getting all the information they need to be getting in order to make what they're required to do is an informed decision. Um, and Can I get so, a quick question real quick? It's, so are we, are we talking specifically about the, the committee of the whole structure in this training? We're is talking that, about was, effective the, co committees, well, the, 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 systems the and committee. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, the background for this was that we had, you know, several members of this board. I think more than half of the board were in favor of um, actually doing away with committees and switching to a committee of the whole structure. 
And so I was led to believe that, that that's what the screening was going to be about. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, sorry the to differences anybody. between committees and committee of the whole, because you need to, when you make that decision, you need to make it understanding the pluses and the minuses. Each one has different positives and different negatives. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. You ultimately need to make a decision on what's the most effective way for you to operate as a board. But historically, the per perspective I'm giving you is that historically, there typically is an issue that board members, some board members tend to feel they don't get all the information that other board members may be getting because they're not physically sitting on that standing committee when those decisions are made. Um, so tonight I'm gonna to talk about standing committees or the committee system, as well as the committee of the whole. Uh, and then I'll, um, uh, yeah, through that, I'll answer any questions that you may have. Um, there is no magic uh, equation that says one is better than the other. It's obviously up to the board. Um, which way they want to go, but we want to make sure that boards make that decision based on an understanding of why they're making that decision. And if it, if, and like I said, if it's a, if it's an issue with process, that, that's, a, that's different than I'm not getting all the information I think I need. It means you may have a bad committee process and that's why you're not, that's why there isn't the confidence in a standing committee versus going to a committee of the whole. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, if the host could uh, enable sharing, I would appreciate that. All right, so let's, let's go here. All right, so let's talk about committees. What makes for an effective committee, whether it's a committee of the whole or a committee of a system of committees where you have multiple committees? What's the defined need? Having a clearly defined need is going to outline the effectiveness of your committee. Do you have defined rules for how you operate, whether it's as a system of committees or a board or a committee of the whole? Does your bylaws define what's expected of the board for those committees, those committee chairs, everybody involved. The com an effective committee can investigate, develop information as requested by the full board and offer opinions and recommendations. They can do that in, in a, in a um, opportunity and attack more issues by dividing and conquering versus everybody trying to do it as a committee of the whole so that there can be a drawback in that. If you're running standard committees or a system of committees, your committee effectiveness is only going to be as effective as your chairpersons. And what your expectation is of chairpersons to ensure that every board member has the information they need and they don't have to physically be sitting on that committee to get that information. And then what's your reporting process? You know, is it, is it a clearly defined process with specifics and identifies the information that every board member is expecting to get? And then an effective committee is making a recommendation based on doing the homework to the full board. And by the time it gets to the full board for a, a decision, if your committee structure is effective, every board member has every piece of information they need to ultimately almost, I'll say almost every piece of information they need to make an informed decision. When you get to the board meeting, there are two pieces. If your process is truly operating efficiently and effectively, every board member is still lacking two pieces of information when they get to the, to the board table to make their vote. If they've done all their homework coming in, these two pieces that they're missing are the public comment and the board discussion, because that's the last opportunity for any other pieces of information that board members need to share with each other, views, et cetera, and then you ultimately take the vote. So if every board member has done their homework 
and your process allows for that homework to be done and effective and everybody's questions and concerns get addressed going into the board meeting, there is no reason that any board member, if, you're, if you have a good solid process, isn't in a position to have all the information he or she needs to make an informed vote. That's what makes for an effective committee structure. In a, in a system of committees, typically there are at least three committees. So some the, some the, uh, boards have more than three, um, but the three main ones that you typically see will be a curriculum and instruction type, an education type committee, a operations type committee, which deals with finance, capital, physical plant, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the personnel or human resources type committee. So every district that runs on a systems of committee has at least a committee that addresses each of these three areas. They may split something up like finance, physical plant, maybe a property and transportation and a finance committee. But, but those, these three areas always get, get set up if a board is doing a system of committees. You also have the, in, in, per your bylaws, you can create ad hoc committees if needed for special items, special projects, and your policies, you know, typically in a, a system of committees, policies relating to that committee are directed to the committee to work on changes, updates, et cetera, to the policy. So those that's typically what you see in the system of committees, the general duties of the committees, the president, the superintendent, the BA, are, and other members are advised of all, and all board members are advised of all of the committee meetings. So in the systems of committees, if the chair is going to call a committee meeting, that information be, should be made known to the full board. The agenda should be sent for that committee meeting to the full board. Why? Because if I'm a, I'm a board member and I'm not on a committee and the committee is having a meeting, if I know what's on the agenda, I may have some questions that I would like the committee to address in those areas. I can contact the chair and say, hey, uh, you're covering uh, item X in your committee this week. Could you, I have a couple of questions that I'd like the committee to address. You give them to the chair and they get, and they get added to the conversation. Or if you see some, you look at the agenda and you say, they're not looking at something that I would like the committee to look at. You call the chair and you can may get, be able to get something added to the agenda because there's something you would like to have discussed and brought back to the board. So that's part of the process that one on the front end, the full board's aware of everything that every committee is working on and has an opportunity to weigh in on that, ask questions, provide uh, to have the uh, committee uh, feed that back to the board. The committees review, discuss, they and everything, they bring their recommendations to the board. The committee's report should come out, you know, within a month, but that and that's assuming if you're going on a month-to-month -month basis, we recommend it comes out within, you know, 24 to 72 hours, basically. It should come out once the summary is put together, it should go out to the board members so that everybody, and it should go out well in advance of the next meeting where action is going to be taken to allow time for every board member to review the committee report, call the chair if they've got questions, um, get answers to those questions, and, and, and it's all part of the process. Um, so that's some of the general duties of a committee. If you look at an education type committee, they work on policies, programs, make recommendations. An operations type committees focused on finance, bills, receipts, uh, capital projects, transportation, maintenance, those kind of things. Your HR, your personnel type committee deals with all of your personnel activities, job descriptions, policies, procedures, things that uh, relate to teachers, the evaluation of teachers, et cetera. So those are some of the basic responsibilities, but all of this stuff should be spelled out in your bylaws. Should be very detailed, very, very, you know, um, informative, so that a new member coming onto the board, if they want to know how you do your, how you run committees, it should be spelled out from A to Z in your bylaws. Most of the time, when there's a concern about committees, 
I say, what, well, what does your bylaw say? And they look at their bylaws and it's pretty basic vanilla, not a lot of meat to it. So uh, a lot of effort, uh, a lot of times I, I hear boards putting a lot of energy into complaining about the committee process. I kind of recommend if, if you took a hard look at your processes and put that energy there, you might actually improve the process such that, that you get a lot more achieved and accomplished through, through a committee type structure. The benefits of a committee system, Jen and minutes go to all board members, clearly defined charge because every, every committee should have a purpose identified by the board and what the expectations from the board is of that committee. Each committee is required to do those in-depth reviews and they may not be able to solve everything in one committee meeting. It may take several meetings to do the homework, the research, the things you need to be able to come back to the board with a recommendation on an area that the board's interested in. Um, a, a committee of the whole to trying to do that could be could bog you down uh, and you may never get to the answer. Um, efficiency at board meetings. If the whole, if a lot of the legwork, the homework, the research is being done and provided in advance and members are getting their questions answered, um, uh, the process is, is working well, you become more efficient at the board at, as, as a board because you're able to address more concerns, more issues, more um, projects, more items that may help move the district ahead than you may be able to do as a board of the whole. Um, also at the board meeting, because all of the initial legwork's done, all of the homework is done, everybody's done their homework, you can have what I call those higher level discussions at the meeting where you, you open up for public comment, um, someone makes a comment about an action. Um, we also recommend you probably want to do your committee reports, your public committee reports and summaries prior to public comment. So the committee, the public gets to hear what the committee worked on. You already know it as a board, but it's informing the public of the work that went into the recommendations that might be on your agenda. Open it up for public comment. Co folks may have comments on some of those agenda items. That's that second to the last piece of information you as a board member should be taking in. Anything coming from your, from your public. And then once you've done that, you go to the item, you take a vote, I mean, a, a motion, a second, and then your president opens it, opens it up for discussion. This is the final inputs that you need to make your informed decision. You have that conversation with your fellow board members. Um, some, someone may say something, one board member may, may make a point that you hadn't thought of and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I didn't even consider that. And it may change the way you're going to vote. That's why the process goes all the way until you've completed that final discussion and now you're ready to make your vote. And obviously you need to make an informed vote. And hopefully if your process is doing, is a well thought out, well uh, adhered to process, you've gotten all the data, all the information, all the opinions you need to make an informed vote. So the, and the other thing is, as I pointed out, a system of committees allows a board to divide and conquer. You may have multiple issues you want to, want to get researched and addressed. You can assign them to the different committees and they can go get that legwork done. Whereas if you had four issues you wanted to research and address as a board of the whole, it's probably gonna take you a while to get through all four of those issues, do the homework, do the research, get the opinions and everything you need to do. So those are the trade-offs, some of the trade-offs you got to think about. Committee chairs, I, I, I think I might've said this already, but that in a system of committees, the committee chairs are the most important individual in your committee process because that is a leadership position on the board. When we talk about leadership, board leadership, everybody thinks immediately, board president, vice president, but every committee chair in a board that runs a system of committees, those are all leadership opportunities. And there's an ex leadership expectation on the board of those individuals. Being a committee chair is not an easy job. 
Can I interject I or do I need to wait till the end? No, you can interject. I'm a committee chair. I'm an elected official. Yet I was muted by the C, the, the superintendent. I was muted during a meeting, as was another elected official. We were muted. Our voices were muted by the superintendent. Is this an ethical action to happen during a committee meeting for elected representatives to be muted by an employee of the district? Uh, it, it's not an ethical action. I mean, I'm, 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 it, it has nothing to do with ethics. It's an operational issue and it's a board issue. It's a board superintendent discussion issue that, you know, what, what, what's, what's your process? Is that, you know, I would say, is that an allowed process? I don't know. Only you guys know as a board. Just, there is Jesse, nothing... if I may, just, just for the sake of everyone, I, I don't recall this incident whatsoever. So um, I I'm, believe Steve sure was there and um, Marissa, Steve, do you recall during the policy meeting where Harry was talking over me and I was muted and later Harry was muted? Is that when you were drawing faces on me? On your on your I, screen, or was it a I, different, was it a different I, one? I, I must I must say I don't recall muting and, anyone. Except and Marissa didn't know because I wrote in the chat. He was yelling. It that was the Marissa's only person fault. I muted. So either way, Vera, I'm not really sure what what the point is. But well, let's, I don't remember let's the incident. Comment. But Steve, I, I will say this. Steve uh, if, if I can comment, I think uh, what the this conversation, in my opinion, this conversation is a board operational kind of discussion. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the training that you're get going through. Um, your well, process is one that you all as a board have to agree to decide on. And like I said, it should be documented. If, but if, this, is, this is what we're trying to do is to move, instead of referring something like that to official channels, putting it into a, a committee where a few people will hear about it. But uh, basically, we're trying to shift to a committee of the whole. I mean, I would really love to get more of these conversations out there in public and in front of people, just so that A, the public, and B, you know, me as a board member can follow what is going on on the board. Because I think, you know, basically these, these, this, these PowerPoint slides are a nice list of ideal, you know, policies and arrangements, but in practice on this board, that's not how it's working. You know, these, these committees are not functioning and the communication is not happening between the committees. So to me, we have to take the drastic action of moving to a committee of the whole. Can we get the training first before okay, we I'm make just, the decision? I feel like we're trying, we're being talked out of the committee of the whole. So I'm just no, we're, we're providing information for us. That's all I, that's I, happening. I, I, I would agree this the is, information this is, is, professional is, neutral, development. is neutral. And I think that Jesse is giving us neutral information. And in the meantime, I'm being accused of something I didn't do and being put on the spot in a public meeting. I, I just, I am quite honestly baffled. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Jesse. I, I apologize on behalf of certain people for their behavior during this. Steve, would you want to uh, bring up this or do you want to stay out of it? It's, it's hard to, I mean, everything was moving quickly. It's hard to say who's muting whom. I mean, I know I talked to you, Vera, afterwards. But was, was I muted and was Harry muted? Uh, I remember Harry being- meeting when you were uh, drawing pictures on me. That's what I want to know. Well, but, but the bigger point is that it doesn't feel like- Was it a different that, meeting when your recalcitrant behavior and the insouciance was present. And if it did happen, if it had been me, I would have muted you too. And if they did it intentionally or unintentionally. But the, the power dynamics are off. You, you ought to look at yesterday's role that came online. If you read that, the SEC, you're talking about ethical things. The SEC has um, some new rulings. And you, you know, what you're doing other people have done around the state and they're being brought to task and some of the board members are, oh well i'm going to resign and after they resign they can still be brought to, to 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 bear on their behavior so people need to be careful with what they're doing and the accusations they're slinging especially about ethical behavior and about letting the flow of the meeting go i mean He's Jesse's taken his time. He's moved it up so we can get this information so we can make an enlightened decision. But before the information, people want to vote. I don't get it. I don't, I really am baffled. It's a school, it's school board, it's education. How can that be the attitude? 
Okay, well, so, yeah, we can keep, keep moving. So yeah, let's let Jesse continue because while this is the first part of the presentation, the second part addresses the committee of the whole. So we do need to hear the full presentation to have a very informed decision-making process. Jesse, please. All right, so um, as I was saying, in a standing committee process, in a system of committees, if your chairs are ineffective from the perspective of filling the role of the chair and all of the duties associated with being an effective chair to ensure, because it's the chair's responsibility to make sure every board member has all the information they need to make an informed decision on the things that they're recommending in their committee. So if the chairs aren't doing that, then you're going to feel like I'm not getting, I'm not getting all the information other than the committee that I'm sitting on. Um, so that's important to understand. If uh, standing committees don't work, if you if you have ineffective chairs and you don't have a chair process that ensures that every board member is going to get the information they expect to get as a board member. The um, all right, so now moving to the committee of the whole, in a committee of the whole, you are, it is it, it, all that to your point uh, that, that Steve made, all of these discussions are in public. Remember, as a board, you are not an administrative organization. You are a policy making unit. You don't run the district. You don't run the day to day. Um, and so that's an important thing that you need to remember. And in, in your role as a board of education is focused on goals and oversight and long range outcomes. It's not what color carpet are we buying or, um, you, know, um, you, know, you, you know, you pick something that's a day to day kind of decision making process. That's not your role. So you need to remember that even as a committee of the whole, because you're now acting, even though it's a called the committee of the whole, it's a board meeting. It, you are in power at a legally advertised meeting where you, even though it's quote, a committee meeting, you can take action. So you have to follow the, the board meeting rules, basically the open public meeting act and the requirements and your board responsibilities as it relates to the laws. Um, the legwork, research, those kind of things that a co committee would do, you now basically are delegating that to the appropriate administrative staff through your superintendent. Your superintendent is the ultimate um, resource. He has the ability to delegate and to others on his team to do research, fact finding, et cetera. And that's why they also have their day job. So. If there's a project or something that a committee of the whole wants to work, it's got to, and, and if you want it to be resolved by the next board meeting, it may not be able to get resolved by the next board meeting based on the work that your superintendent and his staff have, have to do to research, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to be aware of that, that, that you, you as a board aren't out there doing the research, right? Your, your administrative team led by your superintendent or is going to provide you with your resources and information. No different than in a standing committee where the committee chair works with the liaison, the superintendent and the district liaison to get whatever you need for that committee to move forward. Similar, similar thing as a committee of the whole. In, in a committee of the whole, every board member gets whatever information is shared is shared to the whole board member. Backup materials, any recommendations that the superintendent is making, he's making them to the full board. The board as a whole, you evaluate the information, you discuss it, you make decisions on what you want to put in as, you know, based on the superintendent's recommendations, you're gonna make a decision on whether that's going to be put onto your action meeting uh, or whether you're, you're not going to move it to the action agenda. And then, the full board in a committee of the whole structure gives full consideration to every issue, every problem that comes up. So you can't, you, know, you, you don't have that flexibility to say this issue's popped up. Can the personnel committee 
uh, work with the superintendent and go go work on this you know, right away. You may have to call special meetings if it's that important for the committee of the whole to get together. So, so, so those are some things you want to think about, but that's your role as a board in a committee of the whole. The superintendent has a specific role. As I said, he's your educational leader and administrator. And so he has that ultimate accountability for the research, the data collection, all the information that the board, the committee of the whole believes they need to effectively and efficiently talk about whatever issues there are that you want to address. He, the superintendent doesn't relinquish his responsibility to make recommendations. What happens is in a standing committee, superintendent is bringing recommendations to the committee that he wants to put on the agenda for the board to approve. No different in the committee of the whole. He is going to bring recommendations for things that he believes he needs in the district. And he's going to expect the committee of the whole to hopefully agree and put them on the action agenda. Um, uh, you, but you may not agree, but that's that, that, re that role doesn't change. The committee of the whole isn't driving the recommendations. The superintendent still is responsible for making recommendations. The board acts on the recommendations. So as a committee of the whole, you're, you're functioning as a committee to discuss those recommendations and make a decision on whether you're going to go, you know, uh, as a board, the consensus is yes, we, we wanna make this, re we're recommending that this move to the action uh, meeting then it, it will show up on the action meeting and you will be able to take your vote. At that time, the superintendent will provide alternatives. If, if there's an issue with a recommendation, he may have alternatives. That's all part of that discussion, no different than the discussions that would be had at a, um, um, at a regular committee meeting. There is one big difference though. Committee of the whole, you need to be very careful that because you are in a board meeting and you are an officially opened meeting under the Open Public Meetings Act, you need to be careful that you don't violate the Open Public Meetings Act by discussing things that are viewed to be confidential. Um, for example, personnel, it's pretty, sometimes it's, it's tough to have a committee of the whole meeting on personnel without going into executive session to have some of those conversations. Whereas a personnel committee doesn't need to go into executive session because it is not a formal open public uh, meeting. And, and, and if, there, if there are things that are confidential in nature that need to be discussed, which a lot of personnel items are, they get discussed without having to rice notice people or anything of that nature. But as a committee of the whole, if there are things that items that require rice notices just for you to have a committee discussion on it, because you're acting as a board of the whole, you need to dot your I's, cross your T's, and make sure all your legal, all the legal stuff is taken care of, and, and you stay on top of that. Because if you don't, and something happens in the committee of the whole in public that shouldn't have, and a, a staff member feels like the board may have libeled them, you guys will be in a lawsuit, and you will, high probability, you'll lose that lawsuit because it's you, you the comments were made in public in a public session even though even if it was a committee of the whole so those are things that you have to be real careful of where you might have been able to speak freely in a committee you have to be careful that you don't say things that one violate a an employee's rights two that might be unethical based on the 10 tenets of the code of ethics um, so those are all those things as a committee of the whole, you have to keep at the forefront. Um, and uh, like I said, the superintendent makes sure that everybody has the same information, which is basically he's playing that role that the chair, committee chair should be playing to make sure that all of you have all the information you need from that committee meeting to make an informed decision. So that's the superintendent's role. The benefits of the board of the whole is it, it pretty everyone obviously gets to hear and sees all the information at the same time and you get to consider and discuss all the issues at the same time but 
but it also potentially will slow you down in the things that you can do as a committee of the whole in a timely, efficient manner to move your district, move your district forward. So two, two different ways to do business. Both of them are geared around process. Even a committee of the whole can be a hot mess. Okay. If, if it's not managed properly, if board members aren't professional in the way they hold their discussions, you can disagree. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing, but you know, professionally, it, you people shouldn't be disagreeable, right? It's not, and and the meeting and the discussions shouldn't be personal in nature. And if if a committee of the whole meeting is viewed by the public and they're watching people uh, conduct themselves in a manner that, well, this person's having it out with that person, et cetera, et cetera, you're sending a pretty interesting message to your public about your ability as an elected body to govern uh, effectively in the district. So, so there, there's, there's this whole part of the Roberts rules and um, your board president's responsible for managing the committee of the whole is managed just like a regular board meeting. Um, so it's, there's expe expectations on behavior, on how you should conduct yourselves as board members and and there's there's what we call at NGSBA professional courtesies that should be displayed to each other um, in in the public forum. Um, so those are the those are the two avenues that you have to you know that you have available to you. Some boards have policies that say they work as a committee of the whole, but they reserve the right to have you know they, they may have a hybrid where they have two standing committees like personnel may be a standing committee because they want that committee to be able to have those those uh, personnel type cut discussions without having the board have to go into executive session issue rights notices all that so there's there's no uh, there's nothing that says you can't have a a system that's all one way or the other or a hybrid it's a matter of the board discussing it and looking at the pros the cons, the pluses, the minuses, and making this is an informed decision. It should not be an emotional decision. It should be a thought out discussion with the board on what the, what the concerns are and, det and determine as a board, what's the best way to move forward as a board to govern and to meet your responsibilities to do things that will move the district forward not keep hold not hold the district back so so that that's one thing i will note that boards that go to a committee of the whole typically you know if 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 they're a, a board that only meets once a month they typically now are going to meet twice a month because they have to have that committee meeting of the whole um, to prep for the action meeting that normally there would have been committee meetings being held prior to that to set that up. So, so typically you now will schedule, start to schedule work sessions. Um, lots of times I see them scheduled like two weeks apart, you know, so that, so that the committee work can be done. Then if there's any things that, that need to be researched or, or added that the superintendent and his team have to do before the action meeting, you need to give enough runway to get that done. So, so you need to think of how your scheduling is going to work if you go to a committee of the whole and your work sessions, you know, means that your board members, you know, that session is typically not an action meeting session. It's a committee meeting, committee of the whole. Obviously, because it's an open meeting, the board can always reserve the right in the notice that, you know, the board reserves the right if necessary action may be taken um but most boards try to not do action during that meeting it's a discussion deliberation and you spend as much time as you need as a committee of the whole to get through whatever the recommendations are that their superintendent's making any other items that someone may want to present for the board to consider so you have you know there shouldn't be a time clock saying okay we're only going to meet for an hour the idea is that that's a working meeting to get through everything you need to get you to that next 
meeting that hopefully your action meeting will move a little bit smoother because you you know what what items are there you've done your homework as a committee of the whole same thing could happen if you did it, your homework as a standing committee your meeting should move relatively quick because the homework has been done prior to getting to the action meeting um the you know the idea the uh, you know the work session is that session where you can ask questions, et cetera. It's not supposed, any meeting is not supposed to be an I gotcha meeting where you wait until that meeting to throw the grenade on the table to embarrass a board member or a staff member um, because you got something that you wanna throw out on the table to make others look bad. That's not the purpose of it. It should be a professional working meeting and there should be no surprises. It should be good active discussions. Um, it's an opportunity for the staff as well as the citizens to observe you, right? To see the board in action, to see how you act professionally or unprofessionally as the case may be. You're on stage. So they get to see how you act, how you treat each other and, um, and what example you set. We always say, hey, we wanna make sure our we said good examples for our children. Well, you know, the parents get to see you as a school board to see how you behave and, 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 and act in these work sessions where, like I said, you can disagree. There's always a, you know, ability, you know, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. It's how you disagree that sends the message to your public. And if you're doing work sessions, committee of the whole, and your regular board meetings in a truly professional manner, people will see, wow, this board, they, they talk about the tough issues, they get to it, but they're professional about it. And in the end, they, they ultimately get to a consensus, to a majority, they vote and they move on. Uh, and the, the board hopefully will start to build some synergy because you'll start to hopefully improve trust and the public will start to gain trust in you as a governing body. So, so work sessions become a way of life if you go to a, a, a committee of the whole. And some basic guidelines, whether you're a member in a standing committee or on a committee of the whole, you as a board member, you need to do your part. You need to come prepared. You need to do your homework. You need to, uh, you know, um, not throw the grenade and, and you know, and, um, for example, if you do have information and you need to get information, you should get that. You should try and get that information before the uh, the committee meeting. There could be at all because if you have a question and you ask the superintendent that question, others may have that same question, and there may be information that needs to be provided. So if you asked your question a few days in advance of the committee of the whole meeting, superintendent could then say, oh, well, let me get some information together and send that out to the full board to say, a board member asked the following question. Uh, here's the answer and here's some additional backup information and we'll be discussing this at the committee of the whole. So it, instead of springing it at the committee of the whole meeting and the superintendent said, well, I wish you had asked me that because there's some information I could have brought and you may not have a good effective conversation. So it's kind of that being uh, aware of how you individually as a board member can help make the committee meetings and the board meetings run more efficiently versus them the, the, those meetings turning out to be, we're not getting all the information. Well, I had a question last week. I should have asked it last week. We probably would have had the information and could have made the decision tonight, but now we're gonna table it till the next meeting so that superintendent can go off and get the information. But if, like I said, if you had asked it a week ago, superintendent probably would have had the information, given it to everybody, and you could have kept the train moving. So something to think about um, for as a board member, your behavior, both in committee meetings, regular committee meetings, committee of the whole meetings, and as a board, at board meetings is important in making the process work. That's, that's basically the two, P, two, two types, two ways to go. And as I said, you could have a hybrid. Um, no one size fits all. No one size is gonna answer the mail for everything. Uh, if there's a lack of trust and it's not working for 
the standing committees, until that trust is developed, the committee of the whole isn't gonna be much better. So, uh, and so that that's all part of board dynamics and the ability of the board members to try to work together and try to become a team. And the team doesn't mean we rubber stamp everything. A team means understanding what our roles are and how we can work together. And ultimately decisions are made in, in our, our New Jersey process. It's based on the majority. So um, everything needs to be discussed. Everybody needs to make an informed decision. But then when the vote is taken, whatever the decision is based on the majority, that's everyone's decision. It's the board's decision. Even if you voted no, it's your decision because you're a member of the board and the board has spoken. So it's keeping all those principles in, in mind will help help you understand you know, how to make your committee process better, whichever way you go. A couple of other things, uh, I wanna just two other doctors, I'm just gonna share them. You, uh, I sent them to Joe just to give to you as reference materials. Let me put them on the screen just to quickly tell you what they are. Let me stop sharing this and then share, uh, let's see, where's the PDFs? There we go, um, let's go here. All right, so the first document that I just wanna show you, you have a copy of it in a standing committees uh, uh, role. I talked about committee reports. This is just a sample example from NGSBA that says, you know, of how to put a committee report together um, with the kind of information that we believe at a minimum should be in the report. And a board can expound on it, add more things that they want, but this, it's a two page document that has a lot of, if, if all of this information is provided to every board member after a committee meets and then the, in advance, well in advance of a board meeting, you each of you now have this report you review it. If you have questions, you you the chair call the chair, get 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 your additional questions answered. And just similar to what I said about the uh, superintendent getting a question, the same applies to your committee chair. Your process should say the committee chair gets a question from a board member about the meeting, and asks the question. You committee chair will give you the answer. The committee chair should now create an email of that question and the answer and response, send it to the board secretary and have the board secretary send that out from the committee chair to the board. And guess what? So everybody gets the exact same information all the time throughout the process. That, that helps you as a board member, make sure you've done your homework prior to getting to the board meeting. And if you've done that, you've gotten every bit of information you are entitled to to make an informed decision, except for the public comment and the final comments of your board members at the table. Um, the second document I, I provided you is a is a evaluation form. And we provide this, say, if you wanna use it as a board, that's up to you, but it's just basically you fill it out and each of you individually answers the question, your board president and can review it, look at it and get a feel for you know, where you guys are as it relates to committee of the whole versus the committee, et cetera. So it's just a tool to help in your decision-making process on, you know, moving from, moving either away from uh, standing committees to a committee of the whole, or for those boards that are committees of the whole and are considering going to a standing committee. So just a tool that you can use if you, you as a board want to use it. I provided that as another reference document for you. So. That's everything I wanted to cover with you. Like I said, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you one way is better than the other. They each have their pros and cons. Um, uh, I would say a large percentage, most of the boards I know operate under a uh, committee, uh, um, uh, a system of committees. Um, they reserve the right to also, uh, their, their bylaws say they reserve the right to always act as a committee of the whole. For example, budget season, some boards go to a committee of the whole for budget season for all for all of the budget finance stuff. So so you can write your bylaws to fit how you want to operate as a board. But the biggest thing I want to impress on you is if somebody knew 
joins the board in Delanco and they call me in December after the election and say, hey, how do I get up to speed on how Delanco operates? I'm going to tell them, go to the bylaws. If they've done a good job with their bylaws, they are telling, they tell everybody, every board member, as well as the public, how we do business. And they could go to the committee, committee bylaws and it would be spelled out exactly how you guys do business. I haven't looked at your committees, your bylaws in this area. I would say, you know, you may not have as much fidelity and detail that you may want, but it's something to think about. Every one of your bylaws should spell out to a T how you guys do business. So with that, I will turn it back over to your board president and I'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. I have a question. Uh, sure, I'm sorry. Is it, is it common practice around school districts that the chair makes the agenda? The chair of the committee? Of the committee. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, that, that's part of the responsibilities to work with the, the chair works with the liaison. Let me, let me give you a scenario. A lot of districts, the superintendent will, will assign a liaison. Here's a good example. Finance committee, typically the, liaison, the staff liaison for a finance committee is the BA, right? So, the, and what that means is, if you remember your code of ethics training, Chain of command, your chain of command starts and stops with the superintendent. You have zero authority to have conversations with staff members. So the superintendent is an ad hoc member of every committee. So the superintendent has the ability to assign a liaison. That liaison is acting on behalf of the superintendent. So by superintendent assigning a liaison to a committee, let's say a curriculum director to the curriculum committee, he is basically saying, uh, committee chair, you have you know, authority to have conversations with the liaison about the agenda, about things that you need for the committee, et cetera. You know, if there are no liaisons assigned, then the chair needs to be talking to the superintendent and having that discussion. And the agenda is, is, yes, the chair is responsible, just like the board president is responsible for the agenda for the board meeting, but it's a collaborative effort with the superintendent because the superintendent is providing the recommendations that need to be acted on because you can't take action without recommendations. So the superintendent, the BA has a whole slew of things that have to be done on a monthly basis so that your education business, Delanco, can continue running. So those are things that are standard, but there are other things that can be added to an agenda based on the desires of the board president because it is the board's agenda. Committee meetings are the committee's agenda, the committee chair's agenda, but you don't do it in a vacuum. You, you have to be working with the liaison or the superintendent to determine what elements are going to be on the uh, committee meetings because there may be several things that superintendent wants on that for the board committee to address because he needs them on the agenda. There may be other things that you as a committee chair want to put on the agenda for discussion. And like I said, you may get a phone call for another board member saying, I'd like your committee to look into this because I think it's something that would be beneficial for the district. Um, and as a chair, you can say, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll add that to my agenda and you put it on. So it's a collaborative. This idea is the other board members who want something on the agenda. I understand that. But when there's so much information to go through and we want to make sure we get through everything, does the chair commonly around New Jersey, the chair has the power to direct the conversation so that the meeting can go through in a timely manner? In other words, people can talk, but there might have to be some time limits of uh, each person has the same amount of time because otherwise things could you know, go on forever. I mean, does the chair have that authority generally speaking or no? The chair, I will, I, will, I will tell you the chair's responsibilities 
are determined by the board. Okay, just like the board, the board yeah. president's responsibilities are determined by the board. And from a Robert's rules perspective, the chair is responsible for managing the flow of the meeting. No different with a chairperson of a committee. Part of your responsibility is to lead and manage the meeting. So if you, as a committee, you, you are looking to put time limits or maximum speech times, that's something that you need to have a conversation with the full board and, and have that discussion. And if that's the way your board wants to operate, like I said, put it in writing in the bylaws that says, you know, in a committee meeting, you know, each person will have two minutes to speak their piece, et cetera. I've never heard of that, but, um, but to your question of, is the chair responsible for managing the meeting? Yes. 100%. That's your responsibility as a chairperson, unless your bylaws say something different. Thank you. Harry, did you have a question? I think yeah. Harry had one. Yeah. Harry, I, you're I, muted. I, yeah. I'm, you're good now. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that, you know, instead of a board meeting once a month, it's twice a month, and it's a work meeting, and both the work meeting and the board meeting are public. So that's, depending if you look at that as the pro or a con, but at the same time, I think it's highly important to also understand that we can create the system that works and we think will work best for us. I think some sort of hybrid where you know uh, we can wean ourselves off of uh, talking about personnel issues, except in the personnel committee and whatever whatever else that takes a lot of work behind the scenes. And um, you know to understand what it means if you're a committee chairperson doesn't mean you can make up your own agenda, does it, Jesse? It means. You're responsible for putting an agenda get together for the committee meeting. And like I said, they're just like a board meeting. There are inputs that go into every committee meeting and the superintendent, the liaison for that committee, the board members and the chair all have an input as to what you need to be addressing. Committees, committee may have a project that they were assigned by the board. The board wants them to go off and research, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so the committee takes that action and that could be a three month project. So you may be having committee meetings, you know, every other week because you need to be working on that project. So that's one of your agenda items. But as you get closer to board meetings, the superintendent and the BA are gonna have things that depending on the committee, they need the committee to look at so that, that so that they can get a feel for the recommendations of the committee, what the recommendations the committee is going to make and to, before they put those on the agenda and have the conversation with the board president about you know, the prepping the agenda for the next meeting. So it, it's a process. And, and the, the, the better that you talk about the process and what your expectations are, the better you're going to be able to have that process effectively flow. If everybody's, if every chair is shooting from the hip doing their own thing, then you got a problem because the board, the board should dictate how we as a board want our committees to operate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and folks, once you all agree to your processes, then you got to stick to them and you can't go rogue. That's, that's what it's all about, putting it in writing, building a governance process that works for you guys. Yeah, I'll just throw one more little comment. Um, it's not a question, but uh, but thank you very much, Jesse, for taking the time to, to give us this training and fill us in on the issues. Um, and I appreciate your, your reservations too, Harry, but you know, I'm personally, I'm still in favor of moving to a committee of the whole um, as soon as we can, um, because I think that the I think that they're trying to amend the, our current committee bylaws, which as far as I can tell, are largely not really being followed very well.
thing that they did and reforming that process and you know moving slowly is just not the right approach i would rather personally you know get get as many issues out in public as possible and um mm -hmm. and uh yeah and change, change the way this board does its business so that's my opinion thank you very I much that. thank you I, I support it uh, do we so put into I, writing do we put into writing in the bylaws that to dissolve if we go to committee of the whole or hybrid committee of the whole that after two years, three years, five years, it will be reevaluated re or after every three or five years, if we want to maintain that. In other words, if we go to that and we find out it's not, or the people that end up on the board at that point, because remember, we're making decisions for the board. I, I don't you see know, a reason for that. We can just, the board, if the board changes, they can just switch back to a committee structure. No, no, that's why I'm asking Jesse. No, I, I don't current. think it's something you can like go back and forth you know, one year, the next year, one year, the next year. I think it needs and to be. Harry, we're, we don't. I don't. I would say we don't need to go back and forth. Uh, we have bylaws that exist that allow for committees, and that allow for the committee of the whole. They are not highly detailed, but they already allow for it. So I don't think there would be a need to change a policy and say, well, this is exactly what we're doing, and that's that. That's final. That's it, the policy allows for both. Oh, yeah, I I know, but. Look how long it, it's taken to get to this point where we get the information, we get everybody um, understanding it, as opposed to, okay, now we made this change and it isn't working, or there's different people. <laughs> I mean, I guess they can do that too. They get on and say, hey, we don't want this committee of the whole, we want to do committees. So I just, th I didn't know if there was some, um, length of time that it had to be done for Jesse. That's what I was, my question. And yeah, apparently your, your bylaws, remember your bylaws are part of your policy manual. And per CUSAC, you guys should be, should have a process for monitoring, updating your processes, policies. People forget about the bylaw section and they tend to be outdated. Um, and well, if, you have, if you have, bylaws that allow for both, my recommendation would be what's the condition for each of the, when when you use, do one or the other, et cetera, what's the rules for a board to make that call? And then the, for each one of those, what are your rules you, you govern by when you're operating as a committee of the whole and as a committee of a uh, system of committees? That bylaw should be more than one page long. It should be pretty detailed, but it, in the in the front part, it should say when, how does the board make that decision of when to move from one to the other, et cetera. And, and there's nothing wrong with a board saying in their policy at the end, this policy requires review every two years or something. That's, that's you 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 write the rules, guys. Just in terms of the procedures, I'll throw. I mean, I'm, I'll throw this out there. I'm on the policy committee. Uh, not that it's well okay yeah i'm on the policy committee for context one way we could think about this would be um that we want to make sure that we could throw it to the policy committee and have the policy committee write the rules for the committee of the whole and then we all vote on it but that seems contrary to the spirit of what i'm trying to get at i would love if we could go to committee of the whole and then create the policies for the committee of the whole as a committee um, so that's my position i would love to vote on it next month but for that matter i'll vote on it now if, if it will, i so. second that I'd like to put my two cents in on this being as I've been a board member for quite a while. One of the things I've said to a lot of the new members and anybody coming on the board is there's a learning curve with this job. You know, this is not something that you're going to pick up in one month, two months, three months. Sometimes it takes a couple of years to understand what's going on. One of the nice things about committees is it allows you to talk and do certain things in a committee without doing it, everything in front of, you know, the whole town. You know, it, it makes it extremely simple. Last night we had a a, um, a meeting for uh, basically talking about yeah, the contract. Yeah. That took us six hours. Can you imagine if that was a committee of the whole meeting? We'd be there for twelve hours because you know we get off on a tangent sometimes. To me, these you know subcommittees is a way of doing things. Then everybody brings it back to the board. And Jess, I appreciate what you're saying about two meetings a month, but in reality, you know, it would probably be four meetings or better a month. And I'll be quite truthful with you folks, you know, I'm not up to spending 
you know, hours upon hours, you know, in meetings over some things that a subcommittee could do and get figured out and get a result and bring it back to the whole board. That's just my feelings. I think we need to stay the way that we are. That's all I have to say. Maybe we could reduce the learning curve if we were in all of the meetings as a committee as a whole, committee of a whole. Possibly you could, but you'd be spending a lot of times in meetings. I mean, it's just to me, you know, I've been on this board for six months, almost, you know, what is this, May now. Um, and I'm, it's confusing to figure out what's going on. And it's not just ag accident. I mean, I feel like there's just not really effective communication between the committees. And, and so I think that this would really go a long way. I think it would just improve the overall dynamic and improve our relationship with the community because there would be less guesswork about what's going on behind the scenes. For me, it's about transparency with the community. Um, I think we have a serious lack of trust from the public. And one of my main goals um, you know, on my platform for being elected and as an elected official is to help bridge that gap. So I think community, committee of a whole would help uh, help us get there. And, and I'm willing to put in the time. It's important to me, so. Um, I just would like, I appreciate everybody's comments. Really great and it's on both sides. So it, it opens good discussion. Um, I, I'm leaning towards having the committee of whole. I think it's a great idea, but I think that we would probably have to do it in a more hybrid dynamic um, because I do feel that with us having a, a handful of newer members, there are some issues, specifically personnel, that would get pretty tricky in a public matter. And, and I'd be concerned and I wouldn't want anybody to get themselves into trouble. So it's more protection for our board and for the uh, members of our school as well. I wouldn't want us to end up going, you know, over that line that we can't come back from. Um, also, the, you know, like negotiations, this is something specific and necessarily won't have to, you know, be a con like a constant thing. Some of those things may have to be in a more hybrid format for the betterment of the process. Um, but at the same time, I do think that there is a handful of committees that could benefit from us speaking as a whole group. Um, if we set the pr proper parameters. And I think that's kind of what Jesse was putting out there is that you really need to have some guidelines in how you're going to move this forward if that's the direction you're going in and you need to truly follow them. So it can't just be like, you know, the ethics tenants, which, you know, I've sent out on numerous occasions here and there and no one follows them. We have to truly stick to the guidelines that are put in place so that we can actually, oops, I heard myself left and come back in, sorry so that we can actually have a really productive meeting to where everybody can gain information, can have great discussion and can come to um, fruitful resolutions. So I am leaning towards that direction, but I'm leaning towards it in a slightly different fashion. Like I said, a more hybrid direction. I don't think it's something that we need to jump into immediately. I think it's something we do need to discuss because I do find that having something, um, a plan in place is important. I think sometimes if we just jump without totally knowing what we're jumping into, I think that that's detrimental. Um, I don't want to see us having four meetings a month, ideally, hence the hybrid dynamic. I think that, like I said, there is a handful of meetings we certainly can discuss as a group and hopefully can come to great positive progress. But we need to decide which ones are those committees and which ones we feel should maintain a separate, you know, a separate place. So I, I just put that out there because I, I, I'm not opposed to it. I think it's a great idea. I just wanna be sure that we can all come together and make some good progress in the right ways and in the right sectors of, you know, committee wise. Um, but like I said, I, I, want, I do wanna protect us as well so that we can make these decisions for other, you know, committees privately and then present them publicly. So that's just my place. And that's all I wanted to say at this point in time. So it this is Chairman and I wanted because, to follow up on what you said. Like that, that goes contrary to my the reason I'm interested in this topic. But go ahead, Mr. Bersinger. Sorry, I, Stephen. You and I were were going at the same time. I will I will yield. Go ahead. Sure. Oh, I I mean to me, I really wanted to go to a true committee of the whole. Personnel issues will never be discussed in public, so that's a non-issue. But that's going to be always discussed in executive session, and we know the rules. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to say something that's going to get us sued for libel. Um, so to me, the idea of maintaining you know, the committee of the whole, but then keeping like two or three, one or two committees that are still, you know, concealed from the public, that is not what I'd like to see happen. I, I would rather do a real committee of the whole. So I that's my comment. That comment. I can appreciate that comment. 
So actually, Stephen, uh, or Mr. McLaughlin, I, I was going to say something similar that if we operate as a committee of the whole, there are times where we need to discuss things confidentially that will not be held in public. And I think that it's important for those who are talking about transparency to understand that there is a vast difference between confidentiality and secrecy. Uh, it was mentioned at last month's board meeting that there is too much secrecy. And that's, that's the quote I remember. What they're really saying is, we are taking steps to keep information confidential and those, that information is not shared with the public during the public meeting. It's shared during an executive session or a committee meeting that has confidential topics. So I, I mean, no matter what, the committee of the whole idea, I think is a great one. I do think that it will increase communication. It'll increase the knowledge and the information that every board member has. And I think it, it will increase some of the time that we have in whole group meetings. But, but as some board members are saying, you know, that, that increases the learning that takes place amongst the full board. Uh, so that's why I would be in favor of it. And I would be in favor of it for the sake of the fact that if, if it's held in public, like what's happening right now, and people see the discussions that are taking place that are not confidential, uh, I, I see that being beneficial. I'll just make the comment that sometimes in executive session, I think um, sometimes there are topics that are brought up that are, I'm not sure if they're confidential or not. So I know that if I want to bring up something that I think is, I'm not sure I would always ask first before I brought it up in public because sometimes there is a mix and I've seen in executive sessions with confidential and non-confidential topics being discussed. So I just wanted to add that point. Ideally, everything discussed in an executive session is considered confidential, whether it follows the guidelines of why we went in or not. But I understand what you're saying as well. Is there anybody else that has any comments or questions? Harry, I think you're on mute. I don't know if you're talking. It looks as though you were. I was, I was saying it's like being in a, in a jury that you follow the rules that of confidentiality and you're not, you know, that's the purpose. It's not to be interpreted. It's just the rule to be observed. It's not open all the time for literal or figurative interpretation. It's just follow the rule. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else that would uh, have any more questions for Jesse? Because then we could let him go. He doesn't have to stay all night. <laughs> it's 8 30. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking to the dog. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> she's, she's telling me she's had enough. So let's go uh, I know. I hear you. I had to close the door so my dog didn't come in. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Jesse, thank you so much. I don't think anybody else has any other questions, but I do appreciate you taking the time tonight to come this with us so that we can make a truly informed decision on how we want to proceed. Yep. Hey, Jesse. Good luck to everybody. Uh, whatever decision you make, it's the one that's best for the board, right? So, yes. Thank you, Jess. Thanks Take so much. All. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Okay. I would like to now open the public comment on non-agenda items, please. Just looking to see if there's any hands up. All right. I'm sorry, I don't see any hands up. I've just gone back and forth twice. Just wanted to be sure. So I will now close that session. And is there a need to go into executive session? I would like to go into executive session to discuss revising the superintendent's contract to reflect his current duties. So personnel, okay. We can go into executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Mr. Mersinger will probably send out a link so that we can all log in to something special and then come back to this one once we're done. So um, let's see, do we, let's see, do we have a motion to go into executive session? I make the motion. Thank you. I'll second. I'm sorry, who second? Second from Steve. Thank you, Stephen. Um, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Is that the only thing we're talking about in executive? It, I believe so. That's the only thing that's been brought up. Yes. Well, I'd like to talk about um, what we're talking about now, um, which should be discussed among folks before we vote or research done uh, on what the presentation Jesse did so that we can um, contemplate it, figure it out, ask questions amongst each other before I, I we- would say, I would say that's not a confidential topic. I was gonna say, that's not right. great. That's not, executive that's and, not financial, that's, that's not personnel. We can certainly discuss that publicly like we normally do when the topic's brought but up. I'm saying, I, yeah, but that's what I'm asking. Are we doing that after executive? If we're not doing an executive, coming back to do that tonight, or what, what are we doing with that? We're just going to vote well, on it? Ideally, oh, we yeah. should have done it at when I said, were there any other questions or comments after the training? That's so I was, that's yeah. what I was, uh, I asked the question because I had that as a question. What are, what are we doing? So are if we, you'd like, we can come back and discuss this after executive session. We can open it back up. That's why well, I asked. If also, just, just a recommendation. I mean, the, the board has been given information. The board needs time to absorb the information. I'm not saying that we should delay a discussion. I'm just saying that a decision and a vote does not need to happen tonight. That's what I'm suggesting as well. Okay, so we can just <laughs> then after we come out of executive. I, I would love if we could plan to vote on that next month, just get it on the calendar or at least. Okay, consider. let's discuss that after executive then. So we're gonna go into executive. Are we all in favor of going to executive? Let's do one thing at a time. No. Okay. Aye. Aye. Awesome. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, anybody abstain? Okay, motion carries. We're gonna go into executive. Uh, we should, let's see, it's 834. Let's give this no more than, let's come back, let's attempt to come back by 915. So 45 minutes, actually, it's right. like 41, but let's give it a whirl. And the, um, the link was just sent a few minutes ago. In okay. our email, right? It's in our board email. It should be, yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. Motion carries. We'll be going into executive to the public that's here. We'll come back after we're done. We'll make some more discussion on the committee of the whole and then um, we'll make decisions thereafter. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, is there, um, as promised, is there anybody that wants to discuss at length? the committee of the whole versus private committees. I would just like to know what is the timeline for voting on it? So that's something we can discuss for sure. So I was thinking that I, you know, I think it would be good to have each of us send myself and Joe some ideas on how you hope that this will be. Like, what are your expectations for this committee of the whole? Okay, so I could send a survey, Marissa, like a Google survey. Yeah, let's do that. Like a Google specifics. Yeah. Just say, share your thoughts on this topic. That way it's all collected in one area and it can be reviewed. And, and I would say, you know, it, it's not a confidential topic. So the board is free to see other people's responses. I could share the, the spreadsheet with the full board. Yeah, no, I think that that's what we should do for sure, because that enables us to make a good decision and it's a transparent um, process. So um, I'm all in favor of us having a survey, like a Google Doc survey, where there's you know some items presented, we can answer them, and there's an opportunity to provide like additional comment. Because I think that that's just par for the course. So let's have that option. And then let's share the findings with the full board before, now, honestly, right now it's the 19th. I know that everybody wants to go buck wild and put this into, into plan, but I, my objective on, in all honesty is to really have a decision by July, okay, our July meeting, and then put it into practice by August, maybe September. Ideally, September would be nice because the beginning of the school year, because then I would also like to be in person. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm at with everything. Because since four months away. I don't, I don't person, know. hold on, please. Because school will be back in person. Uh, I'd like us, if we're going to meet as the committee of the whole, let's do it. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it and then work it out that way. 
I mean, if we have to do it in August, let's do it in August. But it, it, it doesn't really matter to me. But I would like us to do this type of progression so that we make the right decision. It's not done in haste. It's done with diligence and done the right way so that when we get to that point, we can say we've made a good decision. We know what's going to be, how it's going to play out. Nobody can come to the meeting and say, I didn't know how to do it. We're going to do it and we're going to do it well and hopefully be good, voted, volunteer representatives of our community. That's my hope. Uh, Vince, you're on, on um, mute. I don't know if, what you were saying. Yeah, it was on purpose. Thank you. I'm just <laughs> talking to my, my daughter in the back. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. So if there's no further questions in regards to this comment or in this topic, that I make a motion to adjourn. Motion. Thank you, Phil. Second. Second. Thank you, Bob. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, uh, all right, motion carries. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.